leaders in Babylon was determined by the failure to keep the Sabbath. So when it, when it says failure to keep the Sabbath, it's not referring to the every seven days Sabbath. No, no, it's referring to the annual or the, the every seventh year. And see, and, and see, injustice, because in that seventh year was when you would release your Israelite slaves. Well, if you don't have it, you don't release them. See, and in that 50th year is when you return property to the rightful owners. Well, you don't have it, you don't do it. Three reasons you said missed annual Sabbath idolatry. Yeah, and injustice. Injustice. Mm -hmm. And actually, when you look at those things, injustice is the thing that will really bring God's judgment more than anything else. Yeah. As much as I'm a right-wing radical conservative and that kind of stuff, one thing I do appreciate about many liberals is their desire to see justice. Now, it's sometimes twisted justice, but it's <laughs> twisted in all of politics. But, you know, one of the things that is the strength of our society, our, I think one of the reasons why he's blessed our country in spite of its sin, is because we do provide justice. And we provide justice to the helpless. You know, and uh, just like the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the American Disabilities Act, provides just treatment for people who can't take care of themselves. On my campus, everything is designed for a wheelchair. And we now have a wheelchair-bound student. Uh, that, uh, you know, we, in fact, we, not all is he wheelchair bound. We have to provide him a student to assist him because he can't get his own food and things like that. Um, and yet that's one of the requirements in our country to make sure that even someone who's helpless like that has all the same rights and is taken care of. And that's, the, the, the desire to see justice is something that pleases God. Even if we don't always have good justice. I mean, people get away with stuff. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, justice was an issue. Well, one last thought before we take a break here. And that is some, some basic truths about the holiness of God. And I'd like to point out that one of the things that Leviticus tells us is that the holiness of God is a divine attribute. That's the way God is. But it's also a divine demand. He doesn't desire it. He demands it. And uh, sin violates God's holiness. And God's holiness demands its punishment. Now, how did God provide for it? In the Old Testament, many sacrifices. Now, Jesus is one sacrifice. Humankind was helpless to resolve the problem caused by our lack of holiness. But God took care of it. You know, worship. In the Old Testament, it was provided through priests and sacrifices. In the New Testament, it's through Christ, our sacrifice. So we are in a very privileged position. I think that's why Jesus made the comment. He said, you know, John the Baptist is the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. But the least in the kingdom of heaven was greater than him. We have far greater privileges than John the Baptist had, than Isaiah had. And I mean, Isaiah got to go to, you know, see a vision of God. And yet we're more privileged than Isaiah. We're more privileged than John the Baptist who got to be the forerunner of Christ. Uh, because of our relationship with God. Uh, vastly different. So, that's what I have on Leviticus. Let's take a break, get a stretch, and we'll... But I was I was thrilled about that, and I converted it all over, and then never used it. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I did use some of it. Well, let's look at the book of Numbers. Uh, and let's begin by talking about the question of the numbers. Do we take the numbers literally, or do we take them symbolically? Was there really 603,000 or 600 and however many thousand fighting men? Or was there just 60,000? That would be the big 25 cent question. Um, it would be a greater miracle to conquer Canaan with only 60 or 70,000 fighting men. Think about that. Um, 600,000 relatively simple, you would think. Unless there were a lot more Canaanites than what modern-day archaeologists claim there were. 
See, one of the challenges we have is they say it couldn't have been 600,000. There wasn't that many houses around. There wasn't that many people there at the time. But they're basing that on how many stone buildings they have found. Mm -hmm. But could it be that they built, the inner city would be out of stone, but they had wooden homes all around because it was a heavily forested area. So why would you use wooden built houses? And those wouldn't survive for thousands of years. Just the stone would. Not to mention every time they go to build a road or dig a foundation, they find something. Yeah. So, I mean... I mean, there's something everywhere. They've, they've gotten most of the big cities uncovered, but they haven't found, you know, there could have been... There's villages everywhere. Villages like that, you know, little small dwellings. Tribes. Yeah. Who knows? Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Now, I would say this. There are those who believe that, you know, some of the theories is this. That the word for thousand doesn't mean thousand. That's a possibility. That it meant a kind of fighting unit. That's one theory. I haven't seen that they've been able to prove that from the literature. Another theory that's been proposed is that it was the normal practice of their day to exaggerate armies by ten, you know, by the, yeah, ten times. You know, to add a zero. And so that that's what was done because it glorifies the king. And so they're trying to glorify God by adding to these numbers an extra zero. Um, again, you know, that's, that's where you begin to read the ancient culture back into the Bible and say, I'm going to interpret it based on what I've found true of other cultures. I've seen this proposed by people who still hold to inerrancy. In other words, they believe that it's the inspired word of God, that it was miraculous, that God really did deliver Israel from, from, from Egypt and do all these things. But they're just simply asking the question, uh, can we really know for sure what that number is? Now, I think, I myself, I do think they're legitimate numbers because you got all these other lists of numbers and they all depend on, you know, it, it all adds up. But that would have a nation of about two and a half million people wandering through the wilderness. Uh, and that's a lot of manna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's a lot of water. I mean, think about that. Out in that desert, how much water would it take to support two and a half million people plus their livestock? So if it's two and a half million people, then you've probably got... 20, 30, 40 million sheep, goats, cows, donkeys, horses, camels. You know, can the thing even hold it? I mean, that's the question they're asking. So they're asking really good, hard questions. Um, but there are lists of numbers that it won't work any other way than to take it literally. And we know this, that Israel at certain points, did have very large armies, but by the time of the Babylonian captivity, they couldn't put together 5,000 soldiers because they'd been just reduced down to nothing. God had wiped them out. So, um, my own tendency is, is, is to trust the numbers. Um, God knew what the numbers were, and he didn't need exaggeration. Uh, and it works fine. Now, key theme of numbers, again, I think is preparation for nationhood. They're being prepared. Um, and, but at this point, numbers are really preparing to enter into the land. And uh, here, their preparation for entering Canaan, really under God's leadership, involved several things. National organization. That's a part of the message here. They're organized. It involved discipline and provision of additional laws amid God's blessings. A broad outline for the book of Numbers is, I would say this, the first ten chapters is the national organization. You know, getting them all organized. Chapters one through ten. They're, they're, they're being organized. Organization. Then chapters 11 through 25, the, mid, the middle part of this book, is a series of rebellion and discipline. 
You've got rebellion and discipline. So there's organization first, 1 through 10. 11 to 25, rebellion and discipline. And then 26 to 36, 